Okay. Uh, so welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, July 6 meeting of the uh, Plumpton Board of Selectmen. Just a reminder, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting um, uh, of the Plumpton Board of Selectmen is being conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Um, information for the public on how to join the meeting by video or by audio is on the town website. Um, you can do so by calling in. Um, no in-person uh, attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but we're making every effort to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings. So we are recording, and just a reminder, the recording is not considered a public document. Um, so again, welcome everyone. Um, uh, this is often the place in the meeting that, in meetings that I chair, that I um, remind people about some ground rules. I think the only one I wanna mention tonight is the old use of the legal pad as um, parking lot and as we begin to change language on some of our lists. And the intent of the parking lot is that issues might come up um, which are significant and important but aren't on the agenda or aren't within the time frame of the meeting. And so that we make sure we don't lose any of those, we have the parking lot so that those things can be held on to and certainly addressed at the next meeting or at the proper time or at a time when the subject matter involved can be put on the agenda. Um, so that's a way to make sure that the um, the spirit of open meeting law is not lost, that people have an opportunity to know ahead of time what the discussion will, will be. Um, Mark, can we do introductions? Okay. Why don't you introduce yourself, John? John Trainer, Selectman and I, Clerk. And I'm Mark Russo, chairing tonight. I'm Christine Joy. Uh, John Wilhelmson. And I think we have a couple people on the phone. Christy, are you there? Uh, yep, Christy with the Plimpton Halifax Express. All right. And anyone else on the call? I'm getting a sign that says the Cedrones. Yeah. Oh, are I'm here, Dave Cedroni, um, Dave Cedroni, WATD News. How are we doing? Oh, oh hey. okay. Thank All you. All right, very good. Yeah. Well, welcome everyone. I will mention, I said I was, I was acting as chair tonight. I spent about 45 years at my place of employment telling people I was the acting chief of staff. And in about the fifth decade, people began to catch on that there was some there. All right. Um, everybody to, ready to proceed with the agenda? Um, so I think this may be a relatively brief meeting. Um, the, the first two agenda items are approval and <laughs> signature of documents related to right. um, the sale of lots one and two. Um, and actually, we looked at those documents early today. What I want to do is just confirm the authorization of the Board of Selectmen um, uh, for each of us to sign the documents uh, that are necessary for the closing of lots one and two. Mark, I'll so, make that motion. I'll second it. Okay, all those in favor of that authorization? Aye. 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 Okay, similarly, um, we'd like to go ahead and confirm the authorization to sign closing documents for uh, lot three on Prospect Street. Um, make a motion that we sign the closing documents for lot three on Prospect Street. Second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so it's unanimous on both. Um, those documents uh, will be off to the attorneys. The closing, as I understand it, is on Thursday, and uh, it's another big step in getting things done at Two Brooks. Um, after those are signed, I will be in touch with the treasurer to get an understanding of what's going to be involved in retiring the bonds. I'll be in touch with the Open Space Committee and the fundraising part of that um, to see what the balance is going to be and how we go about r raising the rest. But with any luck at all, very shortly, we should be able to pay off the bond. So 
Um, by next meeting, hopefully I'll have some hard facts and figures and dates on that. Um, so um, the bulk of the rest of the meeting uh, probably involves the Board of Selectmen projects and priorities list and also the Board of Selectmen goals for fiscal year uh, 2021. Um, I, we, we have each of these documents and I'm not absolutely sure how to proceed. Um, um, I, I think, you know, the, the main point of all this is once again, with all the things that we have going on at once that we don't lose anything in the shuffle. And in the past, we've kind of looked at these documents periodically. And I think that's a great process to continue. Uh, in previous years, we were looking at our list of goals every week. I wonder if that might not be better just done as a monthly thing and the projects and priorities list, whatever the time frame that uh, once a month or something. I, the, the problem, of course, that I seem to have and all the venues that I hang out in is that it's easy to create the documents and then forget about them unless we're checking in on them frequently. So, so one question I have is how frequently we might review these. Um, and then I think the other questions are, are there things to add or subtract or change? And, I think um, those are the main questions I have, and uh, I welcome comments on, on any way to proceed with this. Well, I would think that we'd want to look at it maybe quarterly. I mean, it might be more often than that, but maybe the, the projects and priorities kind of review each quarter. That's kind of like thrown out. Yeah, I was hoping we could do it a little soon, but you know, two months or something. It, we've lost a lot of time because of the virus and all the, um, you know, the impact and the fact that we had to deal with that. And it feels to me like there's a couple of things on here that are now going into their second year. And I feel like we need to refocus and bring some attention to them. Um. I, I, I suppose the third thing, besides how often we look at it and what else we have to change, is, is whether we need to or can prioritize. I mean, particularly knowing that COVID continues, that we're a little bit, uh, pro process is a little bit harder. Um, is there a way to make sure we're hitting the most important things? Well, if we review them, let's say, uh, you know, every couple of months, we'll just reorient if we find that something okay. is gone out of whack for whatever reason. Good enough. So that feels good looking at each list. Um, and, and we're feeling like the two lists are actually different and uh, they can't be combined into one thing. I think having done as work experience for a couple of years in this area, uh, your goals should be your overarching goals and you shouldn't confuse those with the tactics and the objectives below that. Uh, I would keep the goals very crisp, very high, and then move into the projects and priorities of how we make those goals happen. That sounds right to me. Do we feel like the uh, our goals list, I, this, this was our goals list for 2019, but do we feel, your words were crisp and what was the other word? I loved it. Uh, I don't remember right now, but I'll, <laughs> I'll look at the at recording, the recording. Later. <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right. Do we feel like the uh, the board goals for changing the title to uh, fiscal year 2021? Do we feel like they're crisp and have in it what we need? You know, I think there might be a little bit too much on our goals and maybe a little bit of tweaking. Um, uh, number two, the senior citizen needs, and that says shared services. I think I would just leave that as a standalone senior citizen needs because okay. it's more than just the shared services. I think services. you're right. I agree. And then maybe put grant acquisition and shared service opportunities as um, something together because those might um, make sense. I think grant acquisition is actually an objective. It's, it shouldn't be on a goal. We've actually hired somebody to do it. Right. So, right. Maybe it shouldn't even be on here. Right. Yeah. All right. So we'll take out grant acquisition. Do we want to leave shared services as a board goal for 2021? At least something we're keeping on the radar screen. 
that's more of a way to get there than yeah. That yeah and the other thing is that i don't see it being successful given the virus is going to go on for quite a while yeah i can't uh, imagine anybody wanting to talk to us <laughs> um i think you're right all right so we'll delete shared services we'll delete grant acquisition are we feeling okay about the rest of the list um I think support town administrators goals is kind of a given. I don't know. I mean, that's just me. It could certainly be on there. I agree with you, Christine. I, I think her goals are our goals. She's our goals are hers. We don't right. need to I mean, reiterate it. Right. That we um, support them. And then um, um, we have done a really nice job with volunteer outreach. Um, I don't know if um, if that really needs to be moved maybe to the parking lot and not a goal. Well, it is on there uh, in the parking lot also right. as, a, as a major category. Which is true. I mean, we depend on our volunteers. I, I'm, I can go either way on that. Uh, I think there's nothing lost in it being on there. I mean, I understand okay. the redundancy. I, I would go back to support town administrators goals, maybe rather than totally eliminate that if some wording was changed to um, nurture, um, nurture a productive environment in which the town administrator works, something like that. I mean, it seems it, I mean, it feels to me like a, a fairly integral part of our job is keeping the town admin productive and happy. Yeah, but you know, the other side of it is uh, it works the other way too. You know, I don't, I don't know that we have to say that. It goes without saying. Okay. It, it feels that, you know, this continued prof professionalism of town, general and financial, and then the town, administ uh, town administrator's goals, they just, it doesn't feel like it captures what we're getting to. I mean, when we say professionalize, where do we want to get to? And that, that's where I'm struggling with, because right. every time it's come, every time we have done something in the financial arena that we thought was good, uh, let's say the budget process this year, that was improvement over the year before, we sort of said, well, we hit our goal. But I'm not sure that's where we, what we're really struggling where we want to get to. That, that's, I don't know, maybe I'm off on a tangent. Can I, can I offer a thought? Sure. I mean, it, it seems like it's a goal, what you want to do to, to further. I mean, it seems like that's a perpetual goal, right? Yes. But it, it's sort of, then you have to take from that, what one or two things are you going to do in 2021 to, to meet that goal? It, you know, you're not going to wave a wand and everything's professional and perfect and you're done. You probably never be done with that goal, you know, because it's, it's, it's town government and it evolves but it's sort of like trying to find one or two things that you would like to, to, to do in this year to continue that, that process, which you've been doing a great job. Of. And I, I sort of agree with you, John, as you say that, because when we get to the project list, we actually spell out under financial, those things we want to do this year, or at least in the, sometime in the immediate future. Right. Now the goal the goal is this high level sort of thing that you're aspiring to, and then it could be met in any number of different ways. It could be met outside of financial too, you know, depending on 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 what things happen over the year. And sometimes it's met by things that happen to come you come upon and you just deal with, and you go back and go, oh wait, that actually met that goal too. But uh, I think you have a lot of the 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 actions which are on the priorities yeah. list. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we just leave it for the time being? So let me, I'm going to work on that list again, make some of these changes. Okay. Actually, I think I want to think it through a little bit more as we kind of clarify that. And let me present a, a next draft at next meeting and we can discuss that part further. That okay, great. Good. Okay. All right. So now projects and priorities. Um, so uh, just as we get into this, um, you know, we put together the town properties committee, which is one of the two most important committees, I think in town, that and the bylaw review. Uh, I don't know how granular we wanna be in this. In other words, when I look at the priorities, 
we've got a laundry list of things, but in a way, maybe that's, that's what John should be telling us rather than us telling him. I don't know. I'm just looking for feedback. So, so I, I th you know, in looking over it myself, I, I think this is the right level of detail because John, we're going to go into a lot more detail. Let's just take the, let's, let's take the, the, the sure. roof issue, right? Yep. You know, that I don't think it's, let's contact a roofer and say, can you fix the leaks? I think it ends up, we're going to break it down and say, you know what, we need a consultant to come out and do an overall assessment of the roof like we did for the schools and give us an overall plan of what we need to do, do some actual infrared, you know, taking infrared pictures and finding out what all these various problems are. Cause there's gotta be five different types of shingles on the building. And that just tells us that we've done a bit here and a bit there and everywhere. And it's sort of that time to stop and take a step back. So I look at what, I look at that committee really digging in. So you say roof issues, you know, that's a priority for the selectmen because we can't have it raining in the townhouse. And so, but we're going to dig down and sort of, well, how do we, how do we get to the point that we can go back to the selectmen and say, this is what we recommend you do. And well, as I look at these, there's nothing I would take off the projects. You know, I mean, that's our laundry list to start. Mm -hmm. So I'm fine with just leaving that. Yep. Yeah, I'm good with yeah, that. We, I, we're blessed to have a really good committee that we can sort of leave in their hands of getting this done. So um, it's good. And, and yeah, we, I agree. I wouldn't want to micromanage your process. I think we will. We'll, we'll share with you as we start to build mm -hmm. this. So, you know, we had our little uh, break because of COVID. Um, and we're getting back to it. And we're also dealing with the, um, you know, the master plan work with the consultants. So we're sort of, we were pulled in two different ways. And we also were running along with the lift thing uh, there, which of course COVID caused problems with that too. But what we're going to do is we'll end up pulling together sort of a, a master spreadsheet to sort of break all this stuff out. And when we get that together in a decent form, we can bring that back to the, to this, to the selectmen to, to share more broadly and sort of how what our process is and how we're hoping to get through it. But I guess I would believe with many of these items, the more complicated ones are going to be more of a let's research it, let's get advice on the problem, and then build a plan about how we're going to attack it and then look at it from a fiscal perspective as to how you can do that. Yeah, and I'm totally agreement with you. Want to move on? <laughs> sure. You know, the highway department is uh, the next, so we start to leave the town properties committee and move into the other sections. One of the um, things we've talked about in the past, and I think it's got a little bit lost, is this paving software management plan, plan which I kind of see as a, a critical piece of letting the townspeople know where we're devoting our energies in terms of highway restoration. You know, I would like to see it ultimately up on the web. So I'm really in favor of getting, if we need a consultant to do that, fine, but to making sure that it, it moves forward. Because we talked about that for at least a year or two. So how do we make that happen? Well, I think it's on here. I think we, we say, uh, in progress, uh, I think we look to Liz to say, update us, you know, on the project, progress as we go through this on whatever time period we put. And I, I think she's on top of it. I, I just don't want to lose focus. Sure. Main Street. I talked to Liz a bit, little bit about this, and I, I may be an outlier on this. We've had lots of vocal feedback, um, and it seems to attract a crowd every time we bring this up. My concern continues to be the visual, and it also the island. And if I had to pick of the two, I guess it would be the island, because right now they take a left. Somehow we, should, we need to bring this to a finish to either, you know, make a decision, put it in front of the townspeople and let them vote if that's what we want to do, or just make a decision. But it's, it just seems to hang there. <laughs> and 
And I know, you know, there, there's people who are going to be upset no matter what we do. So I, I, I don't know how you guys feel, what, what we should do with this. Well, can, you know, it's interesting because every time they sort of go off and do a plan, this huge plan comes back. And, and there's something in between, I think. You know, I mean, I, I witnessed many near accidents there because I used to drop my son off at Dennett in the morning. And, and, and just because people, someone who doesn't know what's going on there coming in. But you look at the, you know, at, at Crescent and Upland. I mean, we didn't have some huge, you know, big plan and multiple lanes and all this stuff when they redid that. They just took the big triangular island and shrunk it down to a narrower, you know, just divider, and then traffic comes, each has a side. And we've talked about that. Uh, you know, in mm -hmm. fact, uh, I think uh, Bob Andrews said he'd even uh, help us by clearing, you know, on his yeah. piece so that there's more visibility. I, I'm, a, I'm in agreement with you, John. We just need to do it. I mean, it seems but, like this, it seems like you could just have a, not a, one of, have a Plimpton sized plan for that change. And the space would be there within the existing roadway without having to, you know, just, just take the, take the points off the island, narrow it and, you know, to actually narrow the road a little bit. And that would just come to a T stop more than, than that. The other thing I thought was a good idea at some point, someone mentioned, I'm not sure whether we can do it or not, is having that be a three-way stop there. Mm -hmm. You know, do that with a three-way stop and you now slow people down on that whole stretch of the road and you make the, I mean, it, you know. And, and that should be one of the things, we've talked about that. I don't know, we never looked into it, I guess. No, we didn't look into it. Um, but we already have the plan, what's been done at Upland. I don't know why we couldn't um, see what it, is, is there a way to superimpose it on that intersection and just see what it would look like? It can't cost a lot of money where all, most of the, um, the plan has already been done and then look at maybe adding the three-way stop and, and kind of seeing what that looks like. I think we, there's somebody, whether it's state people or somebody has to approve beyond ourselves. We what, need them to- looking at it? Yeah. And, and even if you don't do a three-way stop, just turning that into a regular T intersection and removing, right. the, removing the, you know, to, to the flow of traffic in both places would seem to me to, to do wonders for the space. Mm -hmm. I would, um, I'd be kind of concerned about the three-way stop. That sounds like someone getting horribly back-ended. I, I mean, the one other thing is we did get town meeting to approve our um, uh, uh, ability to declare a safety zone, which is actually the easiest of the whole bunch and by far the least expensive. And um, that might be a first step while we work on whatever design thing. I, kind of feels to me like a, a, a whole bunch of white paint down there, um, just signaling where people should go and shouldn't go would be really helpful. Um, but you gotta still gotta fix that island. You can't have people going to the left of the island. Yeah. So I guess the question again is how, how do we keep this moving? How do we get it moving? Uh, that's the piece I'm not sure of. I'm inclined to say to the highway uh, superintendent and to Liz, bring us a simple plan that you think will work. Put it back out in front of people. You know, somehow we gotta gotta get to an end point. Well, I, th I think what drew the crowds before is that each of the plans that were put out there involved moving the roadway. You know, and it yeah. seems like if you if you follow the Upland example. You know, and uh, isn't it also over on uh, at Brook and Spring? I mean, the same thing was sort of done there. They took out an island. And, That's and, a terrible oh, island, though. <laughs> no, but right, but but it was from a from a you know, it's done within the roadway. The space, you know, in fact, you end up taking out some because the roadway would be narrow, so you're you're not impacting anyone's property or the perception of their property. It, bring a plan that stays within the bounds of the existing roadway. Right. And that keeps it less expensive and simple. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree with John. Right. Yeah, we just use our existing space. We need to figure out a way to make it work with the existing space. 
So I will speak to Liz and see about her um, maybe coordinating with Highway and maybe if nothing else, coming up with a simple plan off of which we mm -hmm. can make further um, um, uh, refinements along the way. That sounds okay. good. Okay. Uh, the next item, uh, clear procedures for chipping and removing cut trees. This every time I go to a seniors meeting to tell them what we're up to, this comes up and a bunch of them bring it up and I figure we just need a white paper that says, here's what we do. Because everybody's concerned about, is that the town that should take away that tree that fell down? Or is that on my property enough so that I have to take it? And we just need a paper that says, here's how we measure that. That should be highway, I would think. Well, in the layout, it's, um, I mean, the town's responsible for the layout. Isn't that pretty much it? Uh, when you say layout, what do you mean? Well, the road, there's a layout plan when um, roads are accepted. And um, I'm not sure how far up onto people's property is contained within this layout, but it would be good to get it clarified. Uh, it, this shouldn't be um, too difficult. With, I wouldn't um, think so. Yeah. Mayflower so, Road is always the example that comes up. You know, trees come down like crazy every time we have a storm. Mm -hmm. So since I'll be speaking to Liz and indirectly Highway about the previous thing, why don't I take this one as well and speak to her and see if we can move that along. It's probably a one paragraph answer, but that is our definitive policy right. for the moment. Um, so My I'm answer is she owns all this. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, she and Rob. Well, yeah. and um, the next one was at Main Street speed limits um, that we already were authorized to do. Do you want to take that one too, Mark, and see what the next step is? What do we need to do to declare it a safety zone? And in fact, what we need to do is put it on the agenda and vote it and have highway have some signs ready. I, um, yeah, but I would prefer we talk about a simple plan so it's part of it. If we're going to do it, let's do it once and for all and get it done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with distances from the intersection and all, all of that. that. Jazz. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, that sort of was my baby along the way, so I'll I'll keep working on that. So okay. if it goes a little slowly, you know who to blame. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We made it through the first page. <laughs> Technology, I think. Um, the one thing that um, I think most of Liz has total control of this. She's on top of this. It's working. Mm -hmm. The fiber is being installed. She's done a great job. Uh, the one thing is we need to have a resource that we can turn to who has the smarts to tell us, as you think about your future, this is what you should be thinking about. And we talked to Steve Pello, and he had a fellow who works for him, who he was going to talk to, and the fella apparently said, um, I've, I've got enough projects of my own, uh, but I'd like to see if we can sell them because we really need that person. Uh, we've got a good guy if you want to hitch up computers and printers and all that jazz, but we don't have anybody and neither Liz or I has the technology skills to say this is where we should be two, three years out. Well, I think that's going to be important, too, with um, uh, making the, the town operations more um, user friendly um, going forward, too, is that, um, you know, we're going to have to offer more services available online, permitting and all of that. And it all makes sense that, um, you know, we're looking to do that now. So it would be good to have somebody on board that's got some foresight on um, that can kind of lead us in this direction. Yeah. I think yeah, I'll give you an example. Uh, I didn't realize, but Fios runs down to the Upland Club. Uh, I thought it just came over the Kingston line a little bit on Brook Street, but in fact, it keeps going. But one of the things we've done is we've signed a contract with Comcast that says nobody else can come into the town. So that's something as you think, you know, what are the ramifications from a technology point of view? I don't know. Maybe we're fine. Yeah. You know, so Liz is off. I know looking at it, but I just, okay. I think about these things and it, it concerns me that the blinds leading the blind in a way. 
I think my concern with the technology is I think it's right. We need someone with, to take an overview. We need someone. And the corollary of that is we need the money to pay someone. And, um, you know, we're getting near that point that most organizations of the size of the town have an IT guy that that's their job. And, yeah, um, but you know, an alternative is, and I think they've done this in Duxbury, the school district runs the town technology. That may be an opportunity. You know, why can't the Silver Lake Regional District, why can't we uh, piggyback onto them? So it's just a thought. That's the kind of thinking that somebody needs to sit down who's got the skills and say, well, here's the pluses and, and minuses of that. I don't know, it may make more sense to um, partner with some other towns because, you know, we do offer different services than the school, um, you know, maybe Duxbury or um, Kingston, Carver, they are, um, because we're all in the same boat with um, being shut down with COVID and uh, we're going to have the same challenges so um, you know maybe there's an opportunity maybe even a shared services grant for us to look at um, moving forward with um, with IT as to um, so that we're meeting the needs of um, the residents in Sounds more of an me. electronic um, environment. Sounds good. All right. You well, look like look, you're going to speak for a minute, John. So a uh, couple things. I mean, it, you know, one of one of the, I think the big challenge is you're coming up with that roadmap, you know, because even as I hear us, you know, and it was a couple of years ago, I even said that, you know, oh, we had money on the warrant to 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 buy servers, and I'm already starting to scratch my head. Even a couple of years ago, I'm nobody buys servers anymore. Right. I mean, everything is everything is up in the cloud and that's right. where that's the movement. And so, you know, to be too late to that, you don't want to be too late. You don't want to be the first one out there because that's unless you have a lot of money to, to cover the problems. But, you know, there's there's a lot of services. And I looked at this, I don't know, five, six years ago at the time, you know, and there was, um, you know, a lot of interesting services. It becomes a cost. But the question is, is how much is really the cost? You know, like like having everything is everything is in the cloud, including all of your software and all of that, and so that means that you can get to it wherever you are, which of course takes on a greater greater uh, importance right now. Um, the other piece to that, I think, um, and and I do think it's worth exploring any of the different options. You know, the 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 concept of of having the school sort of take that over. I think the reasoning there is that you know they're running an enormous IT service and system, you know, especially in the high school where you're, where you're, you know, you've got to have everybody connected because they're all using their Chromebooks. And so everybody has to be connected and the infrastructure that goes into that is pretty significant. And they use that when they did the Dennett. So as we started pushing and getting, you know, machines in for all of the students to use in the classrooms, they had to change the whole infrastructure there. So it's, it's an interesting piece to just keep in mind. And then the last piece of just saying technology is I think we actually need to call out here, not just a master plan for IT and technology, but I think you need to actually call out the website because, Absolutely. you know, this is when we've known this for a while, uh, this website we have now is behind what we used to have. Oh yeah, no doubt. It's, you know, it's, we just didn't have the ability to continue to maintain it because it was built in the old way, which meant every time we made a change, we coded it. And, you know, you can, you can run a website today where it's built for you and you change it with an interface. And so you pretty much, you know, you just have boxes that you can fill in what you want to change and it puts it up on the web and there's no coding involved. And so, you know, if, if we're going to do more stuff online in the, now and in the future, it, that's going to be a piece that we're going to need to address. And that is going to cost us money to be able to do that. But you look at, you look at, how many of the town websites run and they're using this stuff and it is, it, it's not, it's not impressive. <laughs> you know, it just, it just doesn't operate the way any e-commerce website operates. And guess what? We're kind of running an e-commerce website, right? Because we need people to be able to, to purchase things online, be able to conduct business online and find information easily. 
And when you're clicking around and some pages haven't been updated or you can't find it or it's under this tab, but it's not under this tab, you know, when we built the original website, we spent weeks and weeks cross-referencing where you could find things to try and figure out all the places that someone might look for it so they could find it because we have so many boards and committees. And, and that's what made it work. So I, I do think that's going to be part of it, but it should be part of the overall piece. And then the last comment I just had is, any is it, you know, that might be some, some place for a focus. Are there any grants out there to be able to do that? Uh, to, to hire a consultant to come in and give us like the master plan for the, for the, for the you know, townhouse campus area and just be able to come in and kind of do a full look through and say, this is what you could do to get yourself to here. But if you want to look and get a jump ahead, here's what you might need to do and what the cost might be. We, we have started down that road a little bit. We've done a uh, survey that the state came in for uh, zero money. Uh, the next step being that we would then take it down to the next granular level. So we knew it exactly what we had. But in my mind, this is all the more reason why we need a technical resource to help us draw the future. Somebody to make sure that the parts all fit together. I, I totally agree with all that. I particularly agree about the website issue. We are so far behind on that. Uh, the two things that occur to me in looking for grants or volunteers or shared services on this is great. Um, you know, but we talk about it all the time. And it seems to me, especially when we get to budget time this year, that's a particular time to be looking at this document and prioritizing. It's a little like the roof on the townhouse is like a no brainer. We can talk about it forever, but next year we better put some money in for the roof of the townhouse. And I kind of feel equally on technology. Um, we can look for grants, do all the other things, but next year when we're making the budget, I think it's essential that we put in and it should be a yearly thing, something to do with technology master planning. I think the real key in the long run, that if we do it right, we're going to save time and hours and employee hours working on this stuff. That sounds yep. good. Okay. That sounds like a community compact grant. It does. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there is every year there is the information technology grant. That's so, right. And we're eligible. We sure are. So it uh, might be worthwhile to have Liz look into that to see um, looking at some type of um, technology grant. Yeah, I think we missed it this year because of the uh, virus, you know, it just... But, you know, maybe they've extended it because of that. Who knows? If there's still yeah. money available, sometimes they offer up an another round. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad to remind Liz about that uh, the next time we chat. All right, shall we go on to financial? You want to lead the way on that, John Trainer? I, I feel comfortable that, uh, you, you know, I think these are the things. We do need this five-year capital plan. The Town Properties Committee needs to be uh, in, involved in how the Finance Committee sees it. Um, so I think, you know, it's something that because of all the things going on, it's kind of dropped back, but we need to make sure, and I believe Marilyn Brown's working on that, so I'm not throwing stones. I think they're well aware and they're moving forward with it. What we do, what we have that's new is the Town Properties Committee, and I think that's a great asset to the Finance Committee when it comes to uh, where we're gonna put our money out in the future. Yep. Yeah, I agree, and I think that they, um, the Town Properties Committee really should be the ones um, setting up the time frame as to when over this five-year plan when projects are being paid they would be able to plan and prioritize because they know the total need yes i agree i think one of the things is really going to help with is what do we do out of debt if we need to out of versus what do we do with our capital or you know right but so unless somebody has something they want to add or change i, I feel comfortable that these are the issues Good. All right, so we're down to emergency management. Um, uh, I, the only thing I'd say is I think we've done an amazing job during the crisis so far and hopefully we stay with it. 
I yeah. agree. It's not my area of expertise, but it feels like we're in good shape. No, we've had a, a really good team um, leading us through this. And uh, yeah, they've been a, such an asset to the town. And, and we've worked so hard to really keep things running. It's, um, yeah, we're so lucky to have them. Very impressed by the fire chief. Mm -hmm. You know, also it, it just, it, it turned out having a real professional at the police station as well at yeah. this time was just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank goodness. Oh, um, can you imagine with what uh, we've had to deal with? Oh my yep, goodness. It's yep. um, on, on, well, and on all the emergencies that are before us now, just having a pro, it, it shows. It shows that's why it. we're so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and that's, you know, furthers our goal for professionalizing town services. It's just exactly um, yeah. right by having good people um, in leadership positions and on boards and, and committees, it really um, helps the town run so much smoother. And I, and I think it's hard when you upfront have to pay more to do that, that people go, well, wait a minute, why is we paying X amount for this or that or the other thing? But this is where you, where you see the savings. You know, this is, this is where you see the savings. It's the same thing with technology. If you invest in that, down the road, something like this comes up and you have one company that can send everybody home to work at home in a couple of days and the other one takes six weeks, yep. you know, and, and it's so, it, Smart investing is really the key to this, and it's really good that this board has been doing that for a number of years here, and we continue to focus on that. Getting the information and then investing where we need to. It's good. All right. So we go down to fire department. So <laughs> I don't know if these should be on here, but these street <laughs> numbers for town buildings, <laughs> it's a, my pet peeve, I, our pet project, to get these little green fire signs all around town. And it seemed to me we ought to start with the library, fire department, town and house, highway department. So that's why it says street number signs for town buildings. So how do we do that? We just tell the chief, go order them. I, in fact, I talked to him a year ago and he said, yes, but you know, <laughs> a little thing came up like the virus and that I'm sure so just pushed. When, when, when you have time and he has time, I, I, is this board willing to say, hey, John Trainer and Fire Chief, please make that happen? Sure. All right. Sounds good. Now we can cross it off the list. <laughs> well, I, well, I'll throw this out here just to be difficult, and you guys cannot listen to me, which is fine. Um, you know, with, with the townhouse campus there, I mean, we're going to be doing a plan to kind of come up with how we redo it. I'm not sure how you... I mean, right now we'd put them up and you'd have all the little signs sitting out along the street. But I'm, you know, I'm not sure for those buildings that you have quite the same need. Like I think the fire department can find the three buildings pretty quickly. Um, but certainly for the other buildings, you know, you have, you, have, you have the highway barn, you have the old townhouse, you have the, the, you know, the barn on Center Street. That may make more sense. I just don't know whether it's worth getting the signs and then if, you know, if we, if we John, they're, they're inexpensive and it sets an example. That's all I'm after. I mean, you're exactly right. Everybody knows where the fire department is in the library, but it just sets a, an example. That's all I'm after. So the I, other thing is this Plimpton hearse. Uh, we've got it. I don't know what we want to do with it. It's sitting down there in Center Street. Um, it's certainly a part of the town history. So it's just on here on the list because someday we may want to see what we can do. I'd like to see it out at, you know, like Memorial Day or something like that, but whatever. It, it also may not be ideal for it to be down in Center Street for too long. <laughs> because? Because it's an old wooden. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, this, this is one of the things we had talked about, about, you know, the storage building. It just this year was not the year to do that. And so, you know, th that may be one of the things that we would, we would have to think about when we look at that, because that building would be, would be climate controlled, at least not, not, yeah. not for humans, but it would, it would not have the, the makes a lot of sense what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Because it will, it will, it will be fine for a few years, but then it won't be because I'm sure it's damp and, and all that down there. 
All right, so natural and recreational resources. Um, I, I might as well take the lead on some of these. So the MVP action grant proposal, I think is in, honestly, I don't remember when we get the results on that, um, but open space committees right away on top of that as is CONCOM. Um, uh, town owned land disposition, review town owned land. I think it's really just a question of when we do that. We do that every year. Um, I don't know if the summer maybe is a slow time and a good time to do that. I think um, Colleen, I spoke to her a while back on these and I believe it was this fall, a, a lot of the properties that were on the list were um, gonna have completed whatever the tax title process is uh, where okay. um, we would be able to dispose of them. But, um, I can talk to her about that because uh, I'm just not sure if it was this fall or next fall that okay. um, quite a few of the properties will have um, been uh, completed the, the tax title process where we'd be able to dispose of them or review so them. Will you check with her on that? Yeah, and then, uh, I definitely will. Out of that, we'll know when to do our annual review. Perfect. Um, the Water Resources Working Group um, is in. Mark, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, just to toss it out there, and it's certainly up to, to you guys, but uh, do you, I don't know if you want the Town Properties Committee as part of that process or not. It hasn't been here before, so it's not something, but you know, if you, if you, whether, whether you, whether, I don't know. So you got something probably for you guys to think about. Yeah. Well, we, not, that we, not that we don't have enough to do, but just trying to be holistic. You know, particularly on the level of knowing or the inventory and knowing what's there, maybe we more or less have it on our head. Let me think about that in terms of not having having enough, but not too much overlap with open space and um, concom. Mm -hmm. So I'll keep an eye on that. Um, uh, the water resources working group is kind of in progress and mapping out the high benefit areas if we were going to go ahead and create protected well spaces, um, uh, lots of grant potential there, uh, a work in progress at this point. Um, has the potential though, particularly with some of these grants to um, protect water resources and at the same time uh, create or protect open space at the same time and recreational mm -hmm. pieces. So um, that's a fruitful area and we're on it. Um, a little bit slow, particularly because of COVID, but uh, that's a good committee at work. Um, Soul Homestead, uh, uh, that re, um, is about the parking lot being created. Uh, the Board of Assessors, I think, as we all know, went ahead with the appropriate abatements uh, for Soul. So that's moving forward. There's a little bit of work from Middleborough, and I think this chapter 97, I think it is, at the state level. Um, uh, uh, the um, Open Space Committee's op a meeting next week to begin to talk about the practicalities of the installation. Uh, there is private funding available for that, and uh, so it's slow, it takes forever, but it is moving forward and it's happening. Um, solar agreements, uh, um, we have enough of those going on right now. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know exactly where we're at. Liz is on top of that, mm -hmm. I think, and the Board of Assessors, and another long, slow process. Um, and then the last one, examine ball fields and Harry Jason Park options. Um, well, the ball field thing certainly goes along with the land um, or the uh, town mm -hmm. properties committee. I think that's an integral part of that. Harry Jason Park, I mean, if there's, if there's a thing there is we have a beautiful resource that nobody knows about except my right. dog and I, um, which is fine. <laughs> um, uh, Mark, do you have a copy of what um, of the gift and the restrictions that are placed on the property? Um, you know, I've never looked at it, and it comes up all the time. And thank you. It would be good for us, the board of selectmen, and maybe particularly to me, to know exactly what that is. Someone mentioned to me the other day that there might be a couple of time limits on a couple of the restrictions. Um, there are. 
so I'm going to pursue that. That would be really good to know, and that might even relate in with uh, um, uh, with the other committees and the town Beautiful. properties committee too. Great. Yeah, I'll I, work on that. I have read it. There are. I don't remember when it is, but it's soon that the, the restrictions, the specific restrictions of not being able to build anything. And that gets into the issue with ball fields and dugouts and you know, right, right. That's what stuff. I thought there was. But I'm pretty sure if if it if it hasn't sunsetted, it's sunsetting within the next couple of years. I just it, it was been a number of years since I looked at it, but it, it is in the it is in the deed. Good. Okay. I'm, yeah, I would love to to I'm know what we can do there. Take a look at that. I mean, just a reminder: maybe seven or eight years ago, this is Joe Freitas's. Um, favorite project and we actually uh, spent about five thousand dollars of cpa money um, to have the field uh, flattened and leveled and regrassed and it's really beautiful over there it's pretty amazing um, all right that's that piece volunteerism and general government um, i had a couple of things on here uh, some of it's just nits uh, one of the things I've been wanting to do is put flags from the from the green to the old townhouse. Um, talked about it for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, just haven't done it. It hasn't happened. I'd like to see that happen for next Memorial Day. So just want to get it out in front of us. I, I think we can probably raise some money to buy the flags. I think there'll be people who want to help us. You mean private, private fundraising? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I did see, I don't know if it's in Kingston, it wasn't Kingston, but it was somewhere that rather than sort of a cloth flag um, was a, a, um, just a sort of plastic thing attached with a flag on it that looked like a very inexpensive, long lasting way to do it. Um, well, it's up for discussion then. Okay. Uh, affordable housing, I know, Christine, you've been yeah, know. this is really something I would love to see us uh, continue to um, to look for opportunities um, to partner with um, some of the uh, Habitat for Humanity or some other groups um, when town properties uh, that um, would be suitable for this type of uh, um, development um, are turned over through tax title or uh, through some other means. So, uh, yeah, I'm hoping that we can continue to work on that. And you, you're talking to Amy there. Uh... I've been working with Amy and Jim uh, Middleton from uh, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we were meeting um, up until um, the, the COVID hit um, about every couple of weeks. And they had expressed some interest in um, the lots that we were selling, and they were going to uh, to look to see if they had a funding mechanism, but obviously that didn't happen. So uh, you know we've had some good discussion. They do have other um, projects that they offer as as well that would be beneficial to um, to people who are um, in. Um, uh, uh, category where they're um, a little bit more financially challenged, where they offer um, help um, rebuilding steps or um, uh, putting in handicap ramps. Yeah. So they have other services that we wanted to bring them in to talk about so that uh, we could raise some awareness of other ways that they can help our residents who, um, who need a little uh, helping hand. Great. Uh, internships. Uh, actually, I have a uh, person from uh, Bridgewater University that came forward on the technology side. So I'll forward around the resume and see if we can get Liz to talk to him at some point. Okay. I had added um, the flag and decoration policy. Oh, okay. Um, so I don't know if it's something that um, that we want to develop just so that um, we're consistent with the islands. And this kind of came up at Memorial Day where, um, you know, we need to make sure that we're, um, we're having a consistent, uh, appropriate uh, decorations for, um, for Memorial Day 
and, um, and getting new flags up on uh, the islands and the flag poles and maybe coming up with some type of policy so that we're doing that because people shouldn't have to pay for this out of pocket to, right. um, you know, to get a new flag up on a, a flag on, or a um, pole on an island or to maintain the flagpole itself. You know, we need to be taking care of town property. Yeah. I, I'll just toss that out here because we have to deal with the one on the green. It is, uh, I don't, I think it was done 21 or 22 years ago and um, it needs to be fully redone. So I'll add that from the town properties committee that will add that to the spreadsheet and it's probably going to be come up pretty high on the list um, just because it's, it's, it will soon be inoperable because of the rigging is, is wearing out and it catches the flag, which is why the flag hasn't been up too much. Um, but we should also, when we do that, probably look into, you know, being able to add some sort of LED light in order, you know, dim light to be able to leave the flag up. So it's not so much of a chore to have to take it up and down all the time if we want, but it's de desperately in need. It's, it's not, it's not even close to the poles, no longer close to white at this point. It's more of a, uh, rustic, uh, whitish rust color. Um, but it's, it's definitely in need of, of, a, of a redo. Um, and now that we cut the trees down around it so you can see it, it's kind of, it's kind of there. So we'll add that, um, uh, to that. And then that will probably end up being a more regular maintenance item that will come up with a schedule for replacing the rigging or whatever. And then the redo of it. That sounds good. All right. Comments on the last four uh, bullet points on here? Well, the cemetery cleanup, uh, we've got the cemetery over on 106 when you cross the Kingston into Plimpton line. Yeah. Uh, it's really overgrown. Uh, it seems to me that we, we did, the Boy Scouts did it, and I think it was probably about 10 years ago. I mean, it was quite a while back. Uh, I hate to see that. That's a town cemetery. It's owned by the town. It is owned by the town. I, I believe so. Yeah, I had I asked Alan Botrano and he was looking at it. But on the um, on the property card, no, I have to be careful here. I think on the geo map property card it says it's owned by the town. So I need Alan to just yeah, validate sure. that. But there's sixty odd uh, people buried in there, and when you go back to the old names, they're all there. So I, I just don't think we should just let it deteriorate into nothing. So that was one, I was hoping maybe the scouts could help us um, again. Uh, I'm not sure, I guess we'll have to talk to the scout leadership and I wasn't sure how, if the leadership was in transit or not. So. Well, John, if it's town property, why isn't the, why isn't the highway, highway cleaning up? Yeah, right. Maintaining it. That's why we got to figure it out. I just was mm -hmm. hopeful that maybe the scouts could at least do a, uh, some of the early work and then let the town take over. Okay. But whatever, yeah. I agree with you. Actually, it, it probably is a, a historic preservation project if there were money necessary from CPC. That's, also. yeah. So let me take that to find out from Alan if we can just validate the deed of who owns it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is uh, that the smallpox cemetery too, John? The smallpox cemetery is, there's two of them. If you leave the townhouse and go down Main Street towards the old townhouse, uh, where the, um, who was the insurance fella? Used to have it right there, just a couple of houses down on the left. Uh, Grace's, Grace's old house. Yes, Grace's old house. There's a road that goes into a house back there, a couple of houses. It's back in there. And I didn't feel, like, I didn't feel comfortable walking down onto somebody's private property and looking around. But I would like to know where it is. So even if we put a sign out on the main street that said there's a, you know, a smallpox cemetery back there. And then I believe the other one, I'm gonna, I, let me validate the exact location of the other one. I think it's over by, um, uh, 106, but I, I need to do a little work there. But there is another smallpox. And then there's a bunch of other little cemeteries, you know, one-offs. Uh, somebody is buried where uh, Bill and Gates Farm is. Out in the back, they found a old gravestone, you know, so. Hmm. 
You know, I, we started the uh, Plimpton uh, Library Genealogy Club, and there's been a lot of interest. And what surprised me was people coming from a fair distance because they have ancestry that came through Plimpton. And so we have a we have a lot of connections back, you know. I think it was um, the town clerk in the 1700s wrote, he didn't think there was a family in town that didn't have a relationship to the Mayflower people. Hmm. So, you know, you got over in the cemetery next to you, John, you got Standish's and, you know, what all. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm just, I'm obviously very interested. It's a pet thing of mine. So, um, senior citizen issues, I guess this, it worries me what the virus has done. You know, we don't have the ability to have meetings now. And I worry about the fragility of uh, some of our seniors. Um, and I think that's for something for us to talk at a future time because I don't know what we do. And it's wrapped up into like town properties you know, do we have a way of dealing with senior citizen needs from the town property area? The old townhouse is not suited to uh, yeah. people who have disabilities. Um, it's very hard. So I, I, it's on there. It's not like I got answers or even a sense of direction, but I need to think we do need to talk it out at some point. Have, have they explored at all using Zoom for virtual meets? I know it's not the same thing, but... Um... You know, you know I, I did bring that up and I didn't get, for one thing, Joy Marble has been, from what I can see, has been working hard on the Meals on Wheels and the, the different things there. Um, and I felt reluctant to really push it at this time, you know, but I think you're right. We ought to take a look. Let's use the technology. Yeah, it, it just, I, I know it's not the same, but I know we've done you know, we've done, I've done things that from, you know, working with my group at work, you know, sure. my boss started out right after the first week we were home, did, you know, happy hour on Fridays at five and we had most people attend. And, um, and I know that, you know, even I'm talking to my mother, she's been doing some of this herself yeah. with these sorts of things. And it just is, it's an opportunity and I know not everybody can do it, but you know, this technology at least is, pretty ubiquitous if you don't have a computer and you do have a smartphone then you can use it on that you can use it on your ipad or your mm -hmm. tablet i mean it, it once it's set up it's very easy to use yes. and maybe it's the type of thing and i know they're trying to deal with the fundamental things but if, if they're able to sort of start something if a couple people do it then maybe a couple more will do it and a couple of more and at least it gives something and some type of connection that they can't have um because this is you know we're, we're we're in the early innings here, but this is not going to change probably for this year. So I agree. And it, you know, one of the things I found when I did the, um, I did the calling around about when, you know, the virus took off and I think I contacted 80 people. I was surprised at how many people didn't want to talk at all. You know, I left the um, voicemails saying, Hey, uh, here's what we're doing. The selectmen call your fire department. We'd like to hear from you, but, People are kind of old Yankee around here, you know. <laughs> they don't want to. They don't want to do things, and I'm not sure. But I, on the other hand, I feel like if we don't reach out, how do we know? So, I've got lots of verbs and no, uh, <laughs> no action. <laughs> okay. Hey, the the last one, uh, John. Maybe we should just take this offline. Uh, this is. Um, one of the things I've found is uh, as part of this uh, genealogy thing we're doing, I've sort of volunteered for, there's a site called Find a Grave. Yep. And uh, you know, you go off and you take a picture of the monument, you put it up on the website and then people have access to it all over the country. And so there are lots of requests coming in because we have so many people that, you know, go back to the uh, Mayflower that people want to see their ancestors' grave so they can tie it in. And I'm running out of, um, I've used the Charles Bricknell study, 
Uh, and I've, but the, the stones are getting so bad and it's not always clear which stone it is. And I know the historical society has, I know that when Chris Moreno was there, they did a, uh, another walkthrough. And she told me, I remember that she said they, they found a lot of errors in the Bricknell study. And somehow I'd like to see us, you know, can we somehow share resources? Yeah, so. I, you know, unfortunately, again, I know it's starting to sound like an excuse, <laughs> but we, we had met, you know, a month before uh, in February about, you know, having the annual meeting and all that. And there was a whole bunch of energy about, Again, digitizing, and I mean that—that's the—I mean that's the end goal for for the. I mean that you know it's one thing to be able to come and look at the original papers, but for most people, they want access to them and they want sure. access to them when they click on the computer. So yeah. being able to do that and get all of that stuff up into the into the digital world is was a uh, a big piece of what we're going to do. And then of course, um, COVID happened and everything shut down. And you can't have those meetings, so a lot of that energy got got kind of dwindled, but. You know, to the extent that we need to, to find that information, we can certainly get in there and, and, and do it. And then again, it would seem like that's something that should be, we should create a digital copy of so it's available. Exactly. And not just available for, you know, for you, but to get it up somewhere where it can be accessed. And, and I would think community preservation might be an avenue for some funding to do that. I mean, it's... Anyway, something to think about. I think they, there, there is, there, there have been some projects that I've heard that I've seen do that. So it's, you know, that, that's our end goal, um, I think, but it's just a matter of getting to that point and being able to get the resources to be able to do it with everything else going on. So um, I think we can certainly, John, let's, we can talk offline about sure. getting in there and figuring out yeah. what we need. Thanks. Okay, uh, so we're down to things to follow long term. Carver Urban Renewal Project. Anything new there? That's um, no, it's it is progressing, but um, um, there really hasn't been anything new on that. And um, the last that we had heard, because Liz uh, checked in with the uh, Carver Town Administrator was that um, this was still years off, that um, it wasn't gonna be happening overnight and it was going to be a lengthy process. So uh, there was a lot of concern about um, access um, through Montello, but um, at this point, there wasn't gonna be any action to, um, to restrict traffic on that road because it was so far off but it's definitely something that we need to keep on our radar. Okay. And Rocky Harvest Settlement compliance. Um, I have not heard. I don't know if um, I wouldn't be um, foolish enough to assume that no news is good news, but mm. um, I don't, uh, but we haven't heard um, from any of the neighbors and, um, and they have, as far as I know, been in compliance with the, the terms of the agreement. This is actually something that comes up. You see it on social media every once in a while, but is there, do we get any yearly report about uh, volume or um, anything like that? No, we, we really don't because it is beyond the scope of our authority. That's with the DEP. Um, they did used to provide us with um, monthly withdrawal reports where the fee was tied to the gallons but it was determined that really wasn't um, the best route for us to take, that we needed just an annual fee because it, um, it just, it, there were no inspections that were occur occurring um, for us assessing that fee. So um, it's, um, no, but it, it would be nice to know. I, I wish that we could um, set up some type of um, monitoring, just, you know, even if it was just, um, you know, um, setting an officer over there and making sure they're not um, pulling down early or coming out late. You know, I mean, it's, they're allowed a certain number of trucks a day, 
Um, we all know what the um, hours of operation are. It would just be nice to know, to reaffirm that, um, that they're in compliance. Yeah, I, I just, I wonder if there's any kind of quantification, whether number of trucks per month or per year um, or, or, or volume of water taken away. Um, um, it, it, well, they're allowed a certain number of trucks a day, and um, but there is no size restriction to those trucks. I think most of them are um, the largest ones they could probably get down there. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know how many gallons they're pumping, and um, that's the, the DEP's call on that. But theoretically, there's some oversight besides us who are given legally very little oversight, but there's some oversight at the DEP level. Correct. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, testing, and um, I believe they, are, they report to the DEP. Okay. Um, so the last two here, the future uh, exploration of shared services and I think that's something on all of our minds. And if there's anything that probably is relatively on the back burner right now until COVID gets cleared up, it's there. Um, and grants, uh, as we all know, we're blessed with Colleen Thompson and moving forward Huge. on that. And that's big, really big. Yep. Um, and that's the list. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that was very good. Um, <laughs> any comments on the list or the process? Uh, I think this is actually worthwhile. Uh, did we decide that maybe once every two months we'll go through this process? Does that sound right? Yeah, you know, where it's been so long, it, I think um, it wouldn't be a bad idea to just um, schedule a meeting uh, every two months where we're going through the list and just getting updates. And there may be things that we can remove, but there may be things we need to add to. Good. Uh, it's just good that we're Great. all on top of it. And there's mm -hmm. enough information here that being reminded of some of it is very nice along the way too. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we, I don't think have any correspondence today. Uh, I don't think there are any town and min updates. So unless anyone has any other concerns, we can jump right into minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so the uh, agenda says minutes for 622. I frantically looked for them a bit ago, couldn't find them. And so maybe- I don't even don't, remember. Um, Did we have uh, a meeting? That's when we reorganized, isn't it? That would have been the Monday oh, after- no. Yeah. Um, after the I, election. I will check with Bree on- we were, I okay. never saw them either. Okay. Okay. So we'll do that. And then the other minutes then are of 625, March 25th, um, or forgive me, June 25th. Um, did everyone have a chance to look at these? I missed that meeting. That was your four o'clock meeting yep. for the, yeah. the contract. All right. I wrote and the minutes, so I'm you okay wrote with the minutes. It. I'm good with them unless you have any updates, John. No, I'm fine. All right. I John, did you make that change that I requested? Um, what change was that? You had um, the vote for adjournment for three, three, zero. You just need to change it to yes. two. Yeah, I did. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yep. yep. All right. Um, so I make a motion. We accept the min minutes with the change mentioned. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Beautiful. And I'll abstain. Okay. Uh, so we are up to, uh, oh, look at that. It's listed in the agenda as Board of Selectmen Raves. Yay. Okay. Can I go uh, first? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. My rave is um, the, uh, it's a rave, but it's, it's kind of, it's, I'm, I'm sad too with, um, you know, what happened in Kingston uh, with um, the recall and all of that. But my rave is that people got involved they um, weren't happy with what was happening in town government and they did something about it. And um, I know um, on uh, Old Colony Planning Council, there was a, a gentleman that, um, Eldon Moreira, who served as a selectman in West Bridgewater and he was a selectman for 39 years. And I believe he was the longest um, serving selectman uh, at the time. And, um, 
he was defeated in this um, last round of, um, of elections. And I think that people who are looking for change, um, they are um, getting involved, which is a great thing. And I just think that um, it's a good reminder that um, this is a temp job and we work for the people and that um, it's important that we don't lose sight of, um, of that, of, um, of who we work for, and that, um, and that we're um, always doing what um, is best for the town. The town always needs to come first. So that's my rave. <laughs> here, here. Uh, John Trainer. Uh, so I'm gonna get, we've probably done this rave before, but, um, I think the Sewell Homestead, uh, the Two Brooks Preserve parking, every once in a while government does something that does it kind of goes under the covers. And yet this is a tremendous win, win, win. Um, you know, Middleborough owned Plimpton land. They let Sewell use the land. Sewell played, paid taxes to Plimpton, obviously not happy. They're a very fragile nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, I think uh, the assessor started it off when she went to the state and said, can we look at reducing those taxes? The state said, no, you got to treat the town of Middleborough exactly as any other private industry or private person. And then throughout this process, lots of people got involved and came up with the idea of, we'll lease what we need for a parking for the Two Brooks Preserve. And that lease will be equivalent to the taxes that Sewell pays because of their arrangement with the town of Middleborough. I think it's a win for everybody. And I would like to see more people aware that every once in a while, town government does something that really is good, very good. And that's one of them. Well, there was a lot of collaboration, um, a lot of different departments that were involved and, um, and a lot of creative thinking that, it sure um, was. that made that happen. So yeah. Yeah, that is true. And the fact it went through two town meetings, Middleborough and Plimpton, I think is a, a big plus. Thank you mm -hmm. for both towns. Um, so actually I have three things. Um, I, I actually had a, a rant, but I, I've been feeling really badly about <laughs> ranting rather than raving, but I was gonna rant about fireworks and the poor horses and the poor dogs and actually some poor human beings that really, really suffer with fireworks. Um, but um, preferring not to rant, preferring to rave, and then looking down and seeing that this says Board of Selectmen raves. So a little side story, I'm doing an interview with WATD this morning and uh, the fella asked the question along the way, and what about the Selectmen raves? But I didn't hear it and I thought he was saying Selectmen raids and I had to ask three times on live radio and I'm <laughs> trying to figure out what a Selectmen raid was. <laughs> um, thankfully, thankfully, this, this is the, the, the good blessing of the, the week for me. I finally figured out that he was saying raves and if I was going to rave about something, it would be that we made it through town meeting that we made it through town election, that we have the townhouse open again. And as, as kind of simple as those things seem in this time, it's, those are huge accomplishments. And uh, um, that wasn't me, by the way. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> for WATD, just for the record, that. Uh, That must have been um, Dan McCreary. That was Dan. It was. But that's a funny story. <laughs> Can you hear me? He's a good guy. He's a good reporter. 6.30 in the morning on, on a Monday morning. You don't want to screw up a live interview that they're going to put on the air all day long. <laughs> um, all right. Any last words? Or John Wilhelmson, do you have a rave by chance? I, I would just say that, you know, I, I think I'm going to echo yours, Mark, that, you know, looking at what we've been able to accomplish over the last couple few months, um, 
both from within the town, within the schools, with what the parents and, and, and students have had to deal with. You know, there's, there's so much, we should, there's so much here to be thankful for as far as what we've been able to do and that we've been able to be still a cohesive community, even though we can't all get together in the same way. Um, and that, you know, we're doing, we're getting the business done um, you know, as best we can, uh, you know, none of it probably would be, as we say, ideal, but, um, you know, I think we should be proud of that. Uh, and that's not just for those that are serving here, but for all the residents as well. And especially for, the, especially for the working parents that have to do, uh, homeschooling, um, and mm. hopefully we'll have a better solution for the fall. But um, this is unprecedented, and I, I just think it's 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 really impressive, you know, given that you don't see it in every town or even every spot around the country working sort of well and carefully and being able to sort of keep things going in, in, in as normal a way as it can be. So I, I, I'm I, I'm really proud to be part of it. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you, everyone. John. So next meeting's uh, two weeks from tonight, uh, mm -hmm. barring problems, uh, July 20th, and I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank All you. Right. Good, Good night. Stay Good night. well, please. <laughs>